All right, Jeremy Miner, welcome to the Facebook Live. So every day we'll wait for everybody to get on and get on. Every day, well, not every day, every Wednesday, we go live with a client from a completely different industry. And what we do is we break down their sales process and we basically allow you to hear uh, certain questions we've trained them in like our advanced inner circle program with the right tonality. So you can take a lot of what they're telling you or what they're training you and actually apply it to what you sell. Now, as a general rule of thumb, for you guys to be interviewed in here, now you have to be a client because you wouldn't understand any PQ if you weren't a client. You would just have little bits and pieces. Uh, you'd have like less than a tenth of a tenth of 1% if you weren't, if you're just watching basic YouTube videos or basic reels and tips we give you. But for you to be interviewed on here, you have to be a client and you have to be making at least 35000 a month in commissions consistently month after month. Okay. And we typically have waiting lists. Now, the lady that we were supposed to interview here today had to reschedule. She had some family uh issues some emergencies i'm not going to go into that she'll be back here in a couple of weeks so i brought in somebody real quick i just messaged him real quick i just saw a testimony from them a while ago and i'm like hey why don't you just jump on because we're usually scheduled about six weeks out and i don't have time to go through seventeen thousand plus testimonials so we're going to bring out a gentleman that when he started uh in sales was doing fairly decent making six seven eight sometimes even ten grand a month okay on his good months but now makes 35,000 plus a month in commissions and actually doesn't even work eight hours a day. And he'll kind of let you know kind of what we do or what he does and he'll explain his industry. And then what we'll do is I want you to ask him questions. So as we're going through this, you're going to post your question to him about, Hey, how did you do this? Or what was the biggest thing you learned here? Or what do you do when the prospect says this? Okay. Something like that. And either myself or this gentleman will actually answer the questions for you. Now, if you are brand new to the Facebook group Sales Revolution, because there's, you know, we're going live on StreamYard in about four different platforms here on my desktop. So we're going live in our Facebook group Sales Revolution. I believe there's about 84, almost 85,000 of you souls running around in there. We're going live in the Facebook business page, about 155,000 of you on that sucker. And then we're also going live on our YouTube channel. 10,000 new subscribers just this week. That thing's starting to grow. And then we're going live here on my personal Facebook. All right. Now, my name's Jeremy Miner. You probably know I'm the founder of Seventh Level. Now, Seventh Level, if you just started following me today, is a sales training organization that trains salespeople exactly like you watching me in this black Hugo Boss shirt. So we train salespeople like you. We train sales professionals like you, sales executives, sales leadership, sales management, okay, entrepreneurs, business owners, consultants, coaches, contractors, anything that sells any product or service. And we train you and your teams specific skilled questions and techniques that work with human behavior rather than working against it. Do you know what I mean when I say works with human behavior rather than works against it? Okay. And now that's called NEPQ. It stands for Neuro Emotional Persuasion Questioning. And we have to teach you the right tone because your tone, your tonality is how your prospect interprets the meaning behind every question you ask. Because there's certain questions that require more of a curious tone. There's other questions that require more of a confused tone. Like, I'm not sure I understand what you meant. Can you tell me? A little bit more about that. See, that's a confused tone. There's other questions that require more of a challenging or skeptical tone. What are the ramifications if you don't do anything about this? See, that's a challenging tone. And then there's other questions that require more of a, a concern tone. Okay, a tone that shows more empathy, reduces resistance, as Joe said there on YouTube. All right. Now, <clears throat> here's what I'm going to have each of you do. If you're on, now, I know you're on the phone. Don't waffle with me. So what I want you to do, if you're on the live right now, I want you to go down to the comment section and I want you to post hashtag live. And if you're on the replay, go post hashtag replay. So if you're on the live right now, go down to your phone and I'm going to have you post hashtag live. I better see hundreds of hashtags live. There's a ton of people on here between YouTube, the Facebook group, my Facebook, the Facebook business page. So I better see hundreds of hashtag lives. And then I want to see hashtag replays if you're watching the replay, because I know a lot of you do that as well. 
And I also want you to smash the heart button and I'm going to be smash the like button. So smash the heart button, smash the like button because I can go golf today. It is only 101 degrees today here in Scottsdale, Arizona. And we've been used to about 112 a day the past two months. So down to 101, I feel like I need to put a coat on out there and I'm just going to go across the street and golf. So I better see hundreds of, of smashed hearts and hundreds of smashed likes. All right. All right. So let's go ahead and bring out this gentleman right here. He's coming from his car. Are you there? Are you there, Ash? Hey, what's up? I'm here, Jeremy. All right. The young guy just turned 20 the other day. All right. So, Yash, yeah. uh, probably everybody's wanting to know what what industry do you actually sell in? What do you do? Lead generation, uh, business consulting, that type of stuff. So okay. helping small businesses or even in individuals, coaches to increase their market share, generate leads for them, uh, you know, automation, stuff like that. But okay. yeah, so you work, you work for a company that kind of you sell for a company that comes in, puts in better operations, could be better systems, better leads, yeah. kind of the whole more SMB type of companies to help them scale, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay, perfect. And are you a brand new salesperson? Are you a vet? You've been around for 150 years. How long have you been around? Not sales. that long, but <laughs> um, well, with this uh, product, about three and a half years. Yeah. But overall, I yeah. uh, mean, about six years, five years. I'd say five years doing high five, ticket. Five six sales. years, high in high the high ticket industry, as you call. Yeah. Okay. So let's. Uh, so I'm going to have everybody ask you different questions here um, as well. So I want you guys to start asking questions, and I'm going to interview Yash, and I'm going to pull out some information. Now, I looked you up, and I know you personally now because you're actually one of our original OGs, one of our original like first 250 clients when we yeah. launched Seventh Level about four years ago, which was just me and my assistant Beth. Okay, and I actually mm -hmm. knew you from another company that I sold in. All right. So that's kind of how I have right. a relationship yeah. with with Ash. He's one of our original clients. Crazy. Now, before you learned NEPQ, typically, how did you sell like six, seven, eight, ten years ago? Like, where did you learn how to sell? Yeah. What I was uh, like the old method of, you know, high pressure. Have you ever watched the movie Boiler Room? <laughs> yes, I've okay. seen Boiler Room. Yes, you, that that was that was like me. I was that like, was you. Oh. I mean, that wasn't me. I, I'm just giving you an out. That was like the way I would sell. I said, you know, what do you mean you're not interested? Like I would handle objections like that, you know? <laughs> um, so it was like brutal. I would be like just so much stressed out when, when I'm going to close that next day. And the word close was like my uh, nickname almost. So, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, it was just different type of selling where yeah. you had to, you know, really try to motivate the client. Okay. to do this like if i could show you this would you do this you know it's like yeah if i could what's it going to take you to buy my xyz today or something like that kind of that type yep. of uh, adversary like you against the prospect trying to win them over you know i don't want to say manipulate but that's kind of what it is win them over so you can make more money make more commissions all right yeah. okay so i mean we're talking you know in you know, obviously you had an advantage because we were in one of the same companies as salespeople together before I retired and then started seven level, you know, a year ago or a year later after that or whatever. So you kind of already knew me and all that kind of stuff. But what caused you to go from selling that way and, you know, starting to wonder like, you know, maybe there's a better way. Maybe I should take a look at what Jeremy was doing. He was yeah. making all this money. What what went on in your mind that caused you to to get into NEPQ a long time ago, which was basically yeah. the first version of NEPQ, which now it's like, you know, times about yeah. 2000. So I think what caused it, it's really just tired of the rejection. You know, I thought it's a numbers game. I just got to get so many no's and just be tough it out. And I said, enough is enough. You know, I, yeah. and I, and I saw that the company I was working with back then, this is old school selling without the internet, hardly. We were just on the yeah. phone, cubicles and, yeah. uh, you know, and I said, there's gotta be a better way. And that's when I saw you and, uh, sure. asking you those NEP questions. That, that's where I started to connect. And I started that's to where you kind down. of start. Yeah. Verbal pacing and stuff. And we'll talk a little bit about that today because I'm going to ask you like individual questions, like what questions you've learned and kind of how we're, mm -hmm. we're going to role play that with. I want everybody to hear that for your industry for sure. 
Um, all right. So you, I mean, cause you weren't doing bad before six to eight grand a month. I know some months yeah. you'd make 10 or even you'd have a good month to make 12, but it wasn't consistent every month. So exactly. you get into, you got into the training. What, what started changing? Like, what did you notice from your prospects, even besides making more sales, but what did you notice yeah, from that? I think one of the things is right off the bat, when I started to say hello, I mean, the sale starts when you say hello, right? It's yeah, the tone of your voice. Yeah. I was like squeaky voice, fast paced, excited. And what changed for me is that I need to, you know, detach myself from the sale. I need to focus okay. on more about diagnosing the situation where I'm at, yeah. kind of look at the lay of the land. If this yeah. guy's even or this person is worth it. For us so how is that, so yeah so you're basically you, you've learned how to disarm the prospect we call that we call that disarming the prospect or the abds yeah. of selling always be disarming we're getting them to let their guard down so you learn yeah. what are called connection questions that we train in the in the portal and the group training and stuff like that okay so let's let's talk about your results like three months later six months i know you're making like 35 grand a month now right which right. is you know 400 some grand a year but what type of results did you start getting three months, six months, a year out from the training? And I feel bad because yeah. you were in NPQ, you were in NPQ like the first version, and now we're on like yeah. the fifth version. Fifth level, yeah. <laughs> but I still learn. So with the results, if you're talking about that, the first thing I found out that my conversions started to go up. The, the revenue per sale stayed the same. So my, but my number of people converting started to go up. They were just okay. showing up more just the way I wasn't like fighting for this. I wasn't hungry. They didn't see that. So it's went okay. up from like seven to 8,000 a month. It started to go up to nine to 10. And then cause these are consistent numbers. Okay. Right? So, so you're, you know, Hey, you're going up a couple grand a month. You're not yeah. like going from seven to 35 no. in one month. That's not realistic, but two yeah. grand more a month this month, two grand more the next month. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, when that happens also, you know, when you get good at this, your, your boss or the companies, uh, can offer you more because you're producing more numbers and you can ask for, you know, higher. Well, you have a lot more options when you have yeah. a higher sales Denver. ability than you have now. So if you're making the company, you know, millions of dollars a year, if not more, you, you yeah. like you control what happens yeah. because they're never going to let you go because you make them so much money. Now your sales ability is not that high. Mm -hmm then you become the option. You're on the, the 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 drawing board. You could get erased, right, by the company because you, you're not selling a ton for them. So you don't have many options. You don't have many options to move up in that company. And you don't have a lot of options to get higher paying sales jobs in other industries because your skill level is not high enough, right? So now that you have that skill level, you're making the company you're selling for. I mean, if you're making 35,000 a month in commissions in your industry, that means you're making those companies millions of dollars a year. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming that you probably renegotiated what they're paying you. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's a matter of, and it's also renegotiating the quality of leads that you're also going to get, right? You could put yourself in a position to take on uh, leads that have more substance, more, yeah. Uh, what I call, you know, qualified and financially yeah. to take those. Because as a top like, rep, like if you're a top 1% earner, like Ash is now in his industry, are the, are the companies he sells for, are they going to give him the worst leads or are they going to give him more of the better leads? They're always going to give the very top people eventually once they get to a certain level, more higher quality leads. Now that doesn't mean they don't call other leads as well, but all the really, really bad salespeople that just didn't perform, guess who gets most of the bad leads? They're going to give them to the worst salespeople. That's just the way it goes. So when you increase your sales ability, right? And your conversions start increasing from that sales ability, magically you get better leads. You have more options. You can negotiate what you're getting paid commission wise, or even salary wise, or both, depending on what industry you're in. And you have tons of options from other companies, but that's all dependent on what? your sales ability and what you've acquired, right? Okay, yep. so there's a couple of questions and then I'm gonna go through and ask you some individual questions that you've learned and we're gonna yep. kind of role play them here for everybody so they can hear the tone. All right, so Jeremy Mitchell has a good question. Jeremy's a really successful client here, makes like 40 grand a month. He wound up you, he's in the home improvement industry. 
sells gutters. Uh, do you feel like staying in one place for three years plays a role in your success because you're more comfortable with the features and benefits? So he's basically saying staying in the same industry for three years. Yeah. Is that is that better? What do you for think? For me, I mean, once you get the knack and you know the product knowledge, you know, when you change industries, remember, I know you don't change as a person, but your product knowledge changes. So one of the things that, and actually the, the company I've, I've been with, they've actually, you know, upgraded their product. They're now doing more AI technology. They're using that. So that has kind of shifted. Uh, so it's not the same exact product, although yeah. it's the same company. So that's one thing you have to look for is that if you look to jump around in other companies, sure, no problem if you can find a good opportunity. But remember that when you change your product knowledge, you have to kind of adapt a little bit. For me, yeah. the company upgraded their systems better and they're using AI now, which is yeah. helping us convert even better. Yeah. Yeah. That and Jeremy, me. I'd answer that question. There's, I don't think there's any right or wrong answer there. I just give you an example of me. So, you know, I, before I retired, I had about, a, you know, they say 17 years, it was almost 18 years. It was like 17 years and nine months. So that's how many years I was in the trenches selling one to one like everybody on here. And I was in four industries and let's say that 18 year period. So if you just do the math, each industry I averaged about four and a half years. Now there was one I was only in about three years because I got bored real quick. But the others I stayed in longer, Jeremy, because as you stay in longer and you make the company more money, you're going to have more opportunities with that company to move up in the company. You're going to have more opportunities to get paid more because there's more trust there. Yeah. And if it's a really good company, sometimes, you know, like one of the companies I had even like uh, ESOP options, like I had uh, profit sharing with that company. Okay. When they, when they sold now, when they sold, I was already gone. So I didn't get any of that. I want to tell everybody that had I stayed in that company for a year, no, two years later, because they sold the Blackstone for 2.3 billion my ESOP options would have been a little bit north of $32 million. I would have made it in one day, but that's okay. Had I made that $32 million in one day for my my uh, sh my uh, profit share options, had I stayed in there, I might not have ever started seventh level for you guys. So it, it ended up working out. But for me, Jeremy, if you're performing really well and you're with a good company and they trust you and they're they're moving you up and they've got a vision that you believe in, not just a job, but like a vision you believe in and you believe you can grow with that company and they're going to pay you more as you perform more. I, I just wouldn't jump around. I just I just wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not saying that you can't get better opportunities. Like I left my first industry after about five years because I felt the next industry gave me a much better opportunity. My first job was selling door to door. After five years of that, or about four and a half, I just didn't want to do it anymore because I had three new kids that were really young and I just got tired of going door to door. And I'm like, look, I can take, you know, it wasn't called any PQ then. I was kind of figuring that out, but I can take my knowledge about what are the problems of the prospects of that industry? How does my solution solve those? And what are the consequences if they don't buy my solution? And I can wrap that into any industry I, I went to. And that's, I went straight from door to door, selling alarm systems, that's business to consumer, into B2B sales, selling SMB, but a lot of enterprise level companies. Now that's a big shift, but within three months, I was already one of the top few salespeople in that entire company. Within six months, I was the number one person in the company. And within one year, I was the number one uh, in the entire industry. And we're talking out of tens of thousands of reps in that industry. Well, how is that possible? Because I understand how the brain works, how human beings make decisions. And that's what you guys, as if you're a client of NEPQ, when you go through our virtual training courses and our group training with myself and trainers, that's what you learn. So that's why, Jeremy, we're able to take somebody like you and, you know, you might be in home improvement now and you're like, hey, I want to go and sell cars and you go sell cars and you three, four months, you're the number one person in that company. Or then you're like, hey, I want to go sell life insurance. And within six months, you're making 30 or 40 grand a month and you're scaling that up. It's because you understand the psychology of NEPQ and you can duplicate that in any industry. That's why we train in 158 different industries now and we duplicate in every single one. Whereas you find most sales trainers really only can train the industry they sold in.
because they don't, they're more personality selling. They don't understand the structure of what we would do with NEPQ. So Jeremy, if you're really happy with home improvement, stay there. Now that doesn't mean you can't go to another company in that space. Maybe they're going to pay you more, better opportunities, or maybe it's better for you to stay there. But it really depends on, you know, kind of good offers. I had other offers. I wanted to, I turned down offers. I had offers from Boeing. Anybody heard of Boeing airplanes? You know, they make the big jets. I had a huge offer. For, for me to be a lobbyist for them with the government to sell jet planes to governments all around the world. My starting salary is going to be like 1.5 million salary. And with commissions, I could have made up to six or 7 million a year. However, for doing that, they wanted me to move to Washington, DC. And I had just gone through a divorce with my first wife and I wasn't going to leave my kids there. I was already making like $3 million a year. I was going to leave my kids to move to Washington, D.C. to double that and not have any relationships. So, Jeremy, depends on your situation, your life and everything with you. So I don't want to say yes or no. Yeah. It's all really dependent on kind of what you want. Yash, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. yeah and, you know, I don't piggyback what you just said. It's, it's, it's not just making more money, what, what you've taught here. It's quality of life. Like I work about four or five hours a day. I could make more if I wanted to working eight, nine hours doing the same thing probably make five, six hundred a year, but you know, that's like what, 50, 60,000 a month, but I would have to, you know, put the time in a little bit. So I, I choose, you know, working four or five hours. That's a funny thing. Cause I know you don't work gym. more than like 25 hours a week and you're making 35 grand a month. If you were putting in like eight to 10 hours a day, you'd probably, you definitely that's, make well over 50 for sure. Yeah. And you're well, there's people right, here so I know that make more than me, but they probably yeah. spend more time. That's, that's the key here. Yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of people in actually your industry too. Okay, so let's let's talk about connection questions. Let's give them some meat here. That's what they're all waiting for. Yeah. What's a good yeah, connection? What's a good connection question uh, that you've learned in your industry to really cause the prospect to kind of let their guard down, kind of become more open to you? So, you know, I, I like to the connecting is you want to find the lay of the land. What's happening? It's near the beginning of the your conversation. So I would say, you know, hey, John. Um, you know, obviously, it, it looks like, you know, things are going fairly well for you. Uh, but tell me, what are some things you'd like to change about your, your situation if you could? So I'm trying to find out. It's also the truth, truths I'm getting into. But okay. uh, I, I hope that's what you're asking. So, oh, uh, no, no, no. This so is, I mean, yeah. that's more that's more of like a problem awareness question. I'm talking about like, yeah. and I, that's my fault for not explaining right. So like when you now, do, I can't remember, do you do inbound leads or like outbound leads? Yeah, inbound. Okay, so they book on your calendar. Do you meet them on Zoom yeah. or on the phone? Zoom. Okay. And sometimes so, they they're not they have Zoom side so call on the phone, but ninety yeah, percent. So 80 for, percent for your good. industry, your your industry is one of, is a very large industry we're trained in, in business consulting mm -hmm. operations that type of thing. So they come in and help companies scale smaller businesses. So I want to get in and results based thinking quickly. So I might start off. You know, I'm looking down since they're on Zoom. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Can you see me? And then instead of saying, hey, how's your day going? Like everybody else does, you're going to look down at your you know, documents or whatever. OK, so it looks like uh, you had booked on the calendar about looking at, you know, possible outside help with, you know, implementing like maybe better operations to really scale your company. Right. OK, see, yeah, but more better operations or more systems or, you know, higher uh, quality leads, if that's what they were talking about so that you can, what's the end result for those companies? Scale their business. And so automatically we are getting them into results-based thinking over price or cost-based thinking. Does that make sense to everybody, what we're doing there? Okay, um, let's see, AMI. Jeremy, what's your advice on the intro with old life insurance leads? It depends on where they're coming from. Life insurance is the largest industry we train. There's one company we have 27,000 agents we train. So we have scripting for everything in there. Even a lot of our programs are industry specific for your industry as well. Uh, I don't have time to pull up those scripts though. So if you want to message me, you'll probably need to join the Facebook group. Uh, message me in the Facebook group and somebody on team will message you back. Okay. All right. Let's go through situation question. Like what's a good situation question you use to kind of help you and the prospect understand the lay of the land. Like you say, like what's really going on? Yeah. Maybe give an example. Exactly. So, you know, you know, it, it looks like things are going fairly well for you, uh, Jeremy. What what would be some of the things you'd like to change about your situation? If you could share that with me, 
Um, that would be my, so, so what I'm talking about is I always say, you know, things are going fairly well, but there's some things they want to change. Are you, so you reach, going, yeah, especially with companies, another good question you can, you probably haven't learned this yet. Cause I know you've been out of the training for about three years. Cause you're one of the OG people that started in the training. So another good question you use with companies is, I mean, so help me understand. I mean, you've, you've been with vendor X for the past five years. I mean, it can't be all doom and gloom over there. Like, what do you like about what they're doing? See, I downplay it. Like, it can't be all doom and gloom over there. So I use my tone. I'm playful there. I mean, you've been with Vendor X, like if they're with another company, okay? You've been with Vendor X for the past five years. I mean, it, it can't be all doom and gloom over there. Like, what do you actually like about what they're doing? Oh, we like this. We like that. And then I'm going to hit them with the question you asked because now they're more open. And then I'm going to say, I mean, it sounds like things are 100% perfect for you. Anything you would change about what they're doing if you if you could? Now, notice I say it sounds like things are 100% perfect. Now, yeah. you know what reaction you're going to get? Well, I mean, it's not 100% perfect. Not 100% perfect? What don't you like? And see, I'm right into that. Because nobody likes 100% of anything they've ever bought, right? You could buy a $500,000 Ferrari today, and in six months, there's going to be something that you don't like. Nobody likes 100% of anything. So yeah. when you use that, Yash, that's something that we've kind of tailored into the training since you've been here. I mean, it sounds like things are 100% perfect for you. Anything you would change about what they're doing if you if you could? Well, I didn't mean it's, I mean, we like them, but it's not 100, you always get, it's, I mean, it's not 100% perfect. Not 100% yeah. perfect? See that question? All right, good. Let's move on. Uh, all right, so let's, uh, let, why don't you guys ask him some questions? Vibe with Jay, the king of tonality. No, you're too kind. Tonality is where the sale is made because your prospect, that's how they interpret everything you say and every question you ask. That's how they interpret the meaning behind your questions. Are they going to emotionally stay surface level with you and give you vague, generalized surface level answers? Or are they going to emotionally open up and tell you really what's going on? OK, that's where the sales made is all of, you know, OK, how do you help them maybe see that they have problems that they might not have thought they had? Yeah, so one of well, one of the things once you get any problem, I always have. so um, has that had any impact on you? Yeah. And they say, oh, yeah, it like in what way, though? So yeah. you kind of like have that downtone. Uh, where yeah. you where you find out because sometimes you know just by them surface level answers are not going to get you the sale and one of the things you taught me is that once you get an issue or a problem out you want to go deeper and yeah. so you ask well, questions if you, you want to make the sale you, for how yeah, long you make the sale. This, yeah because the first thing you would do let, let's role play so give me a give me tell me just a problem that one of your prospects just said they have some type of business owner just tell me a problem i'll role play with you yeah so I I don't have enough clients booking on my on my calendar. I need more customers. So yeah, I mean people that would be my typically problem. the number one reason companies like yours come to us. Nobody comes to us to get less clients for sure. But in your mind, when you say yeah. that you don't have enough clients, how long has that been going on right. for? Ooh, that's about six, seven months now, I think. Yeah. yeah. So not having the clients coming in has that has that had an impact on you guys for sure yeah lack of sales in what, the fact in what way sales flow. in what way yeah see now what i would do before that i just showed you guys yeah i just showed you probing examples but if he said that problem right there i wouldn't immediately go pro yeah. because I don't know how many clients are coming in. I'd have to find those things out first. I just gave you a, a random probing example. You first would have yeah. found out, okay, and how many clients do you actually have that are coming in though? Okay, and how are you generating those? Like if I'm selling leads, uh, walk me through. How are you generating new leads and clients just so I have more context? See, my tone is a curious tone. Mm -hmm. Everybody see how my facial expression changed to what? Kind of a curious facial expression. One thing I want everybody to write down, your face, your expressions on your face are the remote control to your tonality. Your tonality cannot come across as curious or confused or challenging or concerned 
if your facial expression doesn't show that your voice cannot communicate that if i'm sitting here like this how can i sound like i have it's hard to sound like i have a confused tone like i'm not understanding but i'm like help me understand yeah. when you say not enough clients are coming in how many clients typically are coming in on average now See, I'm confused. I'm not understanding. I'm curious, right? Does that make sense to everybody? Right. Okay. Um, AMI. I'm getting pushed back on my connection questions with old leads. I ask, have you found what you're looking for? Are you still looking? You would never ask that for age leads in insurance. It's more of a customer service role. And I don't have time to pull up the scripts on that. Uh, AIM. But you'd probably want to get into our training so you don't have that issue anymore because we have agents that only call age leads that are making 50 grand a month. And you know why they keep calling age leads, even though they have plenty of money to buy new leads? Because they want to train their team on calling age leads because now they have duplication because their new team members can only afford the age leads. So they want to stay with that. Age leads can become good if you know the right tone when you're coming across. All right, let's keep going and maybe I'll even pull up a script. Maybe I'll even pull up a script for AMI and sound off a few things if I can find it. All right, Ash, I digress. Let's go while I'm looking for some insurance sales structures. What's a good uh, consequence question that you've learned to get, get the prospect to kind of realize what the consequences are if they don't do anything? So, yeah, I would say, you know, Jeremy, I, I hate to I hate to ask you this, but I've enjoyed our conversation so far. And my question is, what are you gonna do? I mean, what are you gonna do if if nothing changes and you keep getting the leads that you're getting right now and the problem persists, let's say for the next five months from now, six months from now, maybe even two years from now, what do you think would be the, the ramifications of that happening? Yeah, that's a good verbal pace. You get that's a long question, but so you have to verbal pace that out. And a shorter version, but, yeah. we can simply say, okay, but what? And I everybody pay attention to my tone. I'm going to start out with more of a challenging tone and I'm going to end it with more of a concerned tone. And then I'm going to explain why what yeah. we just okay, but what happens if you don't do anything about this and your salespeople keep getting these, like you had mentioned, bottom feeder leads that never answer the phone. And like you mentioned, your sales keep stagnating another three, six, 12 months. Like what would happen to your job at that point? If I'm talking to a larger company and they're responsible for bringing in leads for their salespeople. Yeah. That's what I would say. Now, if I'm talking to a business owner, if it's a small business owner, what would happen to the business at that point? And notice how I go into that concerned tone. Now, why would I start off with more of a skeptical, challenging tone? Why would I do that? Because my very last solution awareness question, I'm getting them to focus on what their future looks like once the newfound problems are solved. So they're on that emotional high. What would they do with the extra revenue of, or cash flow if you're talking about what you're selling, Yash? And then my consequence question is built to rip that away where they have to defend themselves on why they feel they have to change now, not push it down the road. That's what consequence questions do. Now, why would I end with that concern tone? What happens to you at that point? Because when I come across as concerned at the end, how does the prospect interpret why I'm asking the question? Yeah. That I'm concerned for them if they don't do anything about solving these problems and getting what they said they wanted. Make sense? And what you're doing, if I can say this, you're actually doing objection prevention right there. Yeah. they're not going to come and say back to you well um you know i want to wait another two months or three years yeah. from now because they've just told themselves that uh it's the ramifications what would happen right so 100 yeah. percent. that's, that's a i like hard. that hey so i'm being nice here but aim we're only going to go a few more minutes here for yash because i've got to get off and get a podcast but yep. to answer your questions like when you're calling age leads especially for insurance because a lot of times those those age leads for insurance they've been called by 30 different uh you know agents that could sell in the same companies you are or different companies right and they've been called over and over and over for two months three months six months so if you come in if you found what you're looking for you should look for oh insurance not interested you're automatically going to trigger that so with that type of age leads it's more than probably two three four weeks old that you know multiple other agents are also calling, you have to come across way different. And I'll give you an example of this, okay? 
and I'll, I'll just role play with myself. Hey, is this John? Yeah, John, it's just um, uh, Caden uh, Sanchez. I just had a second to get back to you. You probably already got quite a few phone calls about this, but for whatever reason, it doesn't look like things got updated in the system. Looks like you'd put in some info about possibly looking at different life insurance options. Were you looking for anything specific or just wanting to look at the different options? Now, they could go one of like five different ways there, but notice how I started off. You probably already got quite a few phone calls about this. Now, why would I say that? Because now they're not like, hey, everybody's been calling me. I'm just, I'm eliminating that objection from their mind. I'm just agreeing with them. I'm giving them the objection that they might get. I'm getting lots of phone calls. You probably already got quite a few phone calls about this, but for whatever reason, it doesn't look like things got updated in the system. See, I'm coming across more of as a customer service role with these type of leads. It looks like you put in some information about possibly looking at life insurance. Now, were you looking for anything specific or just wanting to look over the, all the different options? Now, they might say, I don't remember doing that, right? You Now, did you notice how my tone sounded? Low-key, relaxed, yet collective and assertive not nervous, not overexcited, where I'm really excited that they're taking the phone call, like you sound like every other salesperson, that, all that stuff's gonna trigger resistance. So it's like, well, I don't remember doing that. Oh, I, I apologize, I don't know how we got this info. Have you been getting, you mean you don't like to get a million phone calls? No, I've been getting a million phone calls. Okay, well, let me get that updated for you. Now, do you already have a life, do you already have life insurance then? Let's see if they say yes. Oh, okay. And what, what type of policy did you end up going with while I update this for you? Notice I'm saying, while well, I update this for you. Oh, you did. So what made you decide to go with them over like a different option though? Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, they're fairly decent. Uh, I mean, most people that are your age just don't go that route because of X, Y, Z. Now, did you look at all the different options like universal uh, term cashback whole life? Did you look at everything? Now, they had said no from that previous question. So if something did happen to you, who would end up having to pay for like your funeral services and, and pay for all the expenses and all that stuff? Let's say if I'm selling final expense, okay? Oh, I'm not really sure, okay? Or if they said, oh, I'm not looking or I found insurance. That could be another option based on that first thing that I did, okay? Oh, yeah, I kind of figured. I don't know why I didn't get updated. Have people still been calling you? Oh, they have? Do you mean you're telling me you don't like getting a million phone calls every week? And I'm sarcastic. Oh, no, no. I apologize. Let me get that updated. Which carrier did you end up getting set up with? Oh, okay. And what, what caused you to go with, with that company over like a different option? Why get it updated? Oh, I see. And then I'm going in that route. Now, there's a lot more to that. And there's other options that they could say. And we all have that scripted out. Uh, that's in our virtual training uh that's in our virtual training. That's for clients only. So AIM, if you want to make probably five times more than you are now, you might want to join the Facebook group and message me directly. Because if you have your hands on that training, because we train you how to use that sales structure, not just give it to you. It's not going to help you if we just give it to you. You wouldn't know what to do, right? You wouldn't know all the ins and outs. Uh, but if you, you want to sell a lot more, the only thing that holds you back is what? lack of knowledge of how to do it. So once you know what to say and you know what to ask at every single stage of the sales process in that industry, then selling becomes pretty easy. But if you don't know what to say and you don't know what to ask and you don't know how to use your tone to get the prospect to let their guard down, selling can be what? What you're experiencing now. You get, you get your butt kicked because you don't know what you're doing. Lack of knowledge is the what? Biggest expense yep. that salespeople have in their life. Lack of knowledge, yep. being like Ash, that makes 35, 40 grand a month in commissions. All right, yeah, let's come back. I had a couple of good questions for you and I got off track. How different is it from Michael Oliver's training? Well, Joe, Michael Oliver trains network marketers. So we train 150 different industries. So it'd be quite different. I like Michael, I took his course a long time ago, but I've taken like 270 courses. And my background in college was human behavior and social dynamics. Most sales trainers do not have that background, but I really like Michael, really nice guy, but I I don't want to go out on him, but I'm pretty sure he trains network marketers. We train every industry on the planet. So that'd probably be a difference there for sure. Okay, Yash, or Yash, or Yash, you're, we have a, our top salesperson, his name, our top we'll salesperson in our entire company is Yash, so I always call you Yash. Okay, let's go back. What's I'm not going to go through the presentation, but what's a good commitment question you've learned 
to get the prospect to close themselves yeah. in your mind? Yeah. Um, so after you've gotten, you know, your presentation and so the commitment question is where, so do you feel that this could be the answer to what you're looking for? Do you feel like you this feel could like, be the yeah. answer? For, yeah. yeah, that's good. Good commitment question. Or do you, do you feel like, or, or you can, you know, after that, oh, I do. Well, hold on. Why do you feel like it is? And you're going to probe. Well, the reason why I would like it is because of this, this. Well, what's specific? Then you can even go further. The next commitment question. So what specific aspects of what we went over do you feel are, are really going to scale your business the most though? Well, I really like the operation side because of X. And now they're getting like what parts of what you went over, what aspects of what you over, what you went over are really going to, and you repeat back what they said they wanted. Okay, Thanks. let's 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 ask a few more questions, and we're gonna let this gentleman get off because I know you're busy. All right, somebody <laughs> ask us a question. Yeah. We're gonna answer one more question, and Ash, if you have to go, just jump off. It's no problem. Okay, All right. I got one more. I'll stay for one more minute. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. Here's a good one from Alina from YouTube. I hopefully I'm pronouncing your name right. I'm from Arkansas. We don't know how to pronounce names down there. What are some initial probing questions you ask? to get the lead to open up on a Zoom call? Initial probing questions. Well, I can answer that for you, but go ahead. Well, what I'll say, say, you know what? Based on how did you hear about us? Like how, what, what made you make your, make an appointment with us today? Something to initiate what their purpose is, why they're here. More of a connection question there, right there. Oh, sure. So yeah. uh, Elena, to, Elena, to answer your question about a probing question, Probing questions are are predicated based on the answers they give you from like your situation questions and your problem awareness questions. You don't just probe to probe. Probing questions are based off the answers they give you. Okay. So you don't just like, I have to probe here. Well, you wouldn't probe there unless when you asked a, a question, if they opened up, you're clarifying and then probing off the answer. So the probing yeah. questions would be dependent on what they said. So if she's in the same industry as you, Ash, and, you know, they're like, well, you know, we're having some, you know, we're really wanting to bring on, you know, we really need to have more clients. Okay. More clients. I mean, obviously that's why companies come to us. Nobody comes to us for less clients, but in your mind, the more clients, why, why so important to you now though? See, I lower my tone in that concern yeah. tone. So Elena, that would be a, probing question right there okay yeah ash i'll let you go i know you got to throw it. any last words of Thanks. advice you did to like a brand new salesperson I would, here's yeah i would say is that you know uh, i'll tell you for me yeah, and, and if you're if you're thinking about you know advancing your skills uh one of the things i found about this and this is jeremy has not told me about this but i'll tell, tell him that it's the tonality that i learned that's so powerful you may even know what to say and, and it's the how to say it. That's what I learned the most. So the tonality is, is key here. And you not get training. I did get training out for. So for me, you know, this is Ash, paid like ten times over, maybe more than what I've learned. I think, here. It's, I think so, it's paid a hundred times over for you. But I agree. your tonality was yeah. perfect there. You went in and out. The perfect pattern interrupt. I love it with your internet. Yeah. We'll let you jump off. Thanks for being on, brother. I'll okay. answer some of their questions here. So congratulations Thanks, on your guys. success and Appreciate keep it up, it. man. 35 grand Appreciate a month it. is nothing to sneeze on. Congratulations. Take care. All right. Uh, okay. So I'll answer a few more questions here. If you want to ask me questions now, here's what I want to ask you. Type in, actually, let's do this. Type in me if in your industry you want to make at least 10,000 a month, every single month, like be consistent, not just one month. You make 10, the next month you make five. That doesn't count. Type in me. If you want to make at least 10,000 a month in commissions with what you sell right now, I want to see how many of you actually want to make at least that. Now, if you're already making seven or 10 or whatever, type in me. If you want to start making 15 or 20,000 per month, in commissions in your industry. I can assure you, we train tons of people in industry that make a lot more than that now. Okay. But that's where you can start now. Also type in me if you're bigger thinking, you're like, Jeremy, I don't want to just make 15,000 a month. I want to learn. I want to acquire the sales ability 
to make 30 grand a month in commissions in my industry, or I want to make 35,000 a month like Ash in my industry. Type in me if that's you, if you want to make 30 or 35,000 every single month with what you sell. Type in me. Now, some of you might even be getting close to that. Maybe you're already at 15 and you're like, man, how do I make 40 grand a month? Or what sales ability do I need to make 50,000 plus a month in my industry? Type in me if you're like, man, I want to make 40 or 50,000 a month. Like screw 15 or 20. That's good. But I want to acquire the sales ability to make much, much more. Okay. Now, for each of you that typed in me, what's your plan? Oh, I talked about this yesterday on the live. How are you going to do that? How are you going to go from wherever you are right now to making 20, 30, 40,000 plus a month? If you say the same things you are now, if you ask the same questions you are, and you don't know how to use your tone to get your prospects to lower their guard, how will you get to that income? Now, are you going to work twice as many hours? Type in me if you can work twice as many hours as you work now. So you already work eight to 10 hours a day. So that means you're going to have to work 16 to 20 hours a day. Anybody want to sign up for that? Probably nobody, right? You're already working hard. So if you want to double or triple your earnings in your industry you're in now, what do you first have to do? You have to acquire a what? A much higher level of sales ability than what you currently have. Because what happens if you don't? Well, you already know, right? Your income stays where? Where you're at right now. So for you who actually want to do something about it, rather than just dream or talk about it, here's your next step. We make it easy. Message me directly right now. So if you're in the Facebook group, Sales Revolution, if you're on my Facebook or the Facebook business page, it's easy for you. Message me directly right now. If you're on YouTube, you won't be able to message me directly on there because I can't get into DMs with you on YouTube or my staff can't. So you'll have to join our Facebook group. It's right there in purple, right underneath me. It's coming right here underneath me. Go to salesrevolution.pro, right? When you join the Facebook group, just message me directly now. Typically, when I ask this, because between YouTube and the Facebook group and the Facebook business page, there's, you know, 130 of you on here, whatever, between all four of those platforms, which is very low for Wednesday. Usually there's double the people on here. I don't know where everybody's at. So for you who want to acquire those skills to make that type of income, OK, uh, when you come in, message me directly. I will do my best. I'll message some of you back personally, but I can't message a hundred of you. So either myself or one of my stunt doubles will message you back. They're probably going to ask you a few questions. Now, can you be open? Can you let your ego down that maybe you don't know everything there is to know about selling? Just going out on a limb there. Okay. Because what's the biggest thing that holds most salespeople back? Ego thinking they know everything there is to know about selling, even though they don't really make a ton of money. Your commission checks are your record. Anybody ever heard that saying by John Madden with football? You are who your record says you are. Well, in sales, you are what your commission check says you are. Nothing more, nothing less. That's what separates. That's your sales ability from everybody else. Nothing. As soon as we accept responsibility for that, then we can go about improving our sales ability. If we think we know everything, but our commission check says we don't, well, Nothing we can do, right? So message me directly right now. We'll ask you a few questions about what you feel like you're saying or not asking or maybe how you're using your tone that's causing most of your prospects not to buy from you, even though they have problems that your solution solves. What's the missing link? Why are they not buying? So once we find out those details, once we understand kind of what you're making now compared to where you want to be, what you want to make, then uh, you have an opportunity to book with one of our account managers. Our account managers are just, you know, there are experts here. All of them were former clients that crushed it, that we then made trainers here or account managers. And the account managers will find out more details about what you do. OK. And then based on your current sales ability, they'll probably even role play with you a little bit. Based on your current sales ability, 
they'll suggest which of our training programs to get into that's going to make you the quickest amount of money the soonest. We don't have one training program with one price. We're a fairly large company at this point. We have 34 or 35 different sales training programs with different price points based on your current sales ability. If you're only making two or three grand a month, we will not let you in our most advanced program, Advanced Inner Circle. It'd be over your head. It'd be too much too soon. Now, if you're making 10 grand a month, we'd probably put you in there. Okay. But if you're making two or three or four, we're going to put you in different programs. That's going to get you an extra two or three or four grand a month in commissions. And then when you get to that sales ability, then you can graduate into our more advanced programs. If you want to make even more, which you're already going to work the same amount of hours. Why not make more money from it? Because the more money you make, the more sales you make, the what? The more prospects you help solve their problems and get what they said they wanted. That's what selling really is. It's not about you making money. It's about getting your prospects to solve their problems with your solution and get where they want to be. And you get paid a lot of money for that, which you should. Okay. So message me directly. Love all of you guys. Make sure you join our Facebook group, salesrevolution.pro, especially if you're on YouTube. And I will see everybody next week. I got to fly out tomorrow to a big podcast in Dallas. Who's, I think I'm on, what's his name? Patrick, Patrick Pet. I can't pronounce the guy's name. I see him on IG. Patrick Bet David's business partner and all of their insurance. I'm going to be taking over some of their insurance stuff or they want to meet me with me about that. So we're going to go, I'm doing their big keynote training for them in Texas in February. So we're going to do a big podcast on Friday to promote it. So anyways, hope you guys watch the podcast and I'll see everybody next week. Thanks everybody. Stay out of trouble.